since we're on the subject of 182 RGs, there's a lot of misunderstanding about the turbo system in these planes. So I just wanted to go over here, and you're going to follow along, and if you don't have a high performance complex rating, it might not mean much, but if you're used to manifold pressure and RPM, and you even have flown turbos before, it's a slightly different system. What these are, these are turbo normalizers. So a normal turbocharger in a 206, a 210, a Seneca, a 421, whatever it is, they run at an artificially high manifold pressure setting. They run at like 27 inches, 26 inches, and then the RPM is at 23, 2400, so they're being artificially forced to run at higher power. That creates heat, that creates wear, that reduces TBO, it creates high maintenance, cracking of exhaust, shock cooling when you're descending, idling on the ground. There's a lot of things that you have to be aware of in a turbocharged plane. These have none of that. So the way these work is, on the throttle, there is a, a portion, after you've pushed it in halfway, where the turbo wastegate starts to close and starts introducing turbo to it. So below, you, you take off at 31 inches. 31 inches take off in a non-turbo, in a turbo, in everything. If you can get 31 in a non-turbo at sea level, it's 31 inches take off. In these turbo normalized ones, it's half power. Half throttle is 31 inches. So you've taken off, you've pulled it back to 24 squared like a normal, normally aspirated 182RG. And the normally aspirated can do 24 inches of manifold pressure at 6,000 feet or below, depending on temperature and altitude. So the turbo is doing the same thing. So therefore it's not turbocharged yet. However, at 6,000, as you start to climb with a non-turbo above 6,000, you're going to lose an inch of manifold pressure. And there's nothing you can do about it because you're at full throttle. But with the normalized plane, you push the throttle in, the engine does 23 inches, the turbo gives you the last inch, so it's still at 24, so it still thinks it's at 6,000 feet. Keep climbing, you're at 15,000 feet, approximate numbers. The engine's doing 19 inches of manifold pressure. The turbo, having had the throttle pushed further in by the pilot, is giving you the lost five inches, so it's still at 24, you do it manually. So on the gauge at 15,000, it's 24 squared, just like it was at 6,000 feet, but six of those inches, or five of those inches, is turbo contribution. And because the engine doesn't know that, the engine just thinks it's at 6,000 feet, it's not being subjected to any extra higher temperatures or pressures, it doesn't reduce the TBO, there's no wear and tear on it. So hypothetically, if you were at 20,000 feet and the engine could do 9 inches, now I'm going to have to get my maths right, the turbo is giving you 14, but it's still at 24 squared. That's approximately. So it just thinks it's at 6,000 feet. And as you descend, you gain an inch, it goes to 25, you pull back, you gain an inch, it goes to 25, you pull back, so you keep it at 24 on the way down. And as you go through 6,000 feet again, the engine says, I can do it on my own now, I'm 24 squared, I don't need the turbo, so the turbo is now off again. So from 6,000 all the way down into the pattern, gear down, flaps, base, final, land, taxi, park, is non-turbo. So that's why you don't need to idle them on the ground like you need to idle a 210 or a Seneca or a 206. So it's a very, very long-lived engine. It's 540 cubic inches with 235 horsepower. The 182 fixed gears are 470 cubic inches at 230 horsepower. So there's only five less horsepower, but there's something like 50 more cubic inches. All right, 470 up to 520. Yes. So you've got all that extra cubic inches, but five more horsepower. So it's a very derated engine. Flat out RPM is 2400. So they have an incredibly long life, very long lived high TBO engines. Even a turbocharged plane looked after and well maintained will go way through TBO. And um, the Continental's equivalents, like the 520s and the 206s, they have 1400 hour TBOs, maybe 1600 hour TBOs in 206s. So the Lycoming is actually a very, very good application in this plane. And that's why they are very popular, very reliable. Okay, so the 182 Turbo RG turbo normalizing system from the inside, the throttle has two stages to it, which you can feel when it isn't running. But when it's running, the general vibration sort of hides it, so it's seamless. But you push into about here, that is, with all that throttle left, that is takeoff power. And that is not turbocharged. So you just look on the manifold pressure gauge to see 31 inches, take off, pull it back to 24 squared. So beyond there, there'll be turbo. So from here on in, there's turbo. And the other camera will be showing. If I push this in, there's a linkage that's moving across, and it will pick up a second linkage, 
which will be closing the wastegate and as the wastegate closes more and more air is diverted into the turbine which then makes it spin which creates the mouthful pressure so it's completely on here there's no fourth knob like in a turbo normalizer that's been added to say a Mooney or a whatever it's all on the throttle so it's seamless and you literally have got unlimited mouthful pressure up to all the common altitudes that anybody would normally normally fly at you could be in Leadville, Colorado in August with four people and you could take off with 31 inches of mouthful pressure with full fuel and four people. So it's a very, very versatile system and it doesn't hurt the engine to use it because it's the pressures that the engine would be subjected to at sea level on a cool day without a turbo. So an interesting point is if you have a turbo RG and you never go above 24 inches and you never go above, uh, if you never go above 6,000 feet but you keep on climbing and you don't push the throttle in any further, the mouthful pressure will drop away like a non-turbo RG. So they can be both. A turbo can be both and a non-turbo is only non-turbo. So that is the inside view of what it does. See the resistance? There and turbo.